Hello, hello. Oops, I went for that one. There we go. Hey. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. So it's six fifty. So we'll start in about ten minutes in terms of the actual steps. But welcome in the meantime. If anyone has any quick questions, you can of course let me know. Or say a little quick hello if you want. Wait for about 10 more minutes. I had a little trouble getting it up today. I don't know what happened, but I pressed go live and then Facebook just did not uh, <laughs> did not comply with me there. It just said, oh, it didn't work. I walked away and it came back. I said, oh, it's not live. Whoops. <laughs> hey, Sharon, nice to see ya. So this is, uh, yeah, this nice underwater painting. This is the one we voted on in terms of what time to do in the evening. So. Hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully that worked best for everybody. I guess it did because that was the vote winner, but yeah, I also know it's a nice Sunday night, so maybe some are waiting for this one on YouTube. We'll see, we'll see. But I'm excited, I'm excited to see all the customizations on this one. I think that's uh, something we'll see lots of, honestly. I think we'll see lots of customizations with this one after the fact. I know a lot of people were excited about changing up the fish into something a little bit different, either a different sea creature or just a different type of fish. Yeah. Hey Kelly from Virginia again, welcome back. Is it you painting? Is your family joining you today? I know a lot of people were saying their kitties were excited about this one, so curious if the kitties were able to uh, make it today, considering it's maybe close to their bedtime, not sure. Hey Christy, nice to see ya. Thanks for popping in. But yeah, we'll wait right until 7 just to make sure everyone can get organized. And hello Joanne! Oh, I missed you there Joanne, hello! So if anyone has any questions about materials they need or anything like that, let me know. Uh, if you guys want on Facebook, if you want to test those little reactions, that would be great. I don't think they're working again today, but we'll just give it a little test. If you want to do any little thumbs or hearts, those little floating floating ones, feel free. Ah, just use some me time, Kelly. That's always nice. Painting's always good for that. Do, 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 do. I'm not seeing any reactions. I don't think they're working again. All good. <clears throat> so I don't have any events posted um, officially, but I've got plans for next week. Uh, so next week I think we'll be doing an, a 
Thursday, or no, a Friday, excuse me, a Friday night event. Just gonna double check my schedule here before I commit. It was Friday and Sunday that I had plans for. Just can't find, oh, there we go. Friday, yeah, I think Friday at 8 p.m. we'll be doing something. I think it's gonna be the Niagara Falls one because that seemed to be a very highly anticipated one. So let's say that Friday at 8 p.m. will be Niagara Falls and then we're gonna do Sunday for Father's Day. Hey Anna, for sure. Oh, you did? Oh, cool. I saw your comment on Instagram saying that you were gonna work on it a little more, at least a little later. So I'm excited to see, feel free to post it or just to PM me. Especially excited to see yours, considering you're so pumped for it. Yeah, I'll watch for it wherever you want to post it. So yeah, guys, uh, here I'll show you Niagara Falls again in case anyone didn't see. And I'll show you the Father's Day one, why not? Got them both here, my big pile of paintings. So yeah, Friday 8 p.m. I'll post this event uh, tomorrow just so you can officially RSVP on Facebook. We'll be doing this nice Niagara Falls painting. Again, another guest request made it a little rainbowy, nice and colorful again. So I'll teach you this one step by step Friday at 8 p.m. And then the Sunday one, Father's Day, I haven't decided on a time yet, but it'll be earlier in the day because I think a lot of families are hoping to use this as a nice Father's Day activity. So probably like 2 p.m., 3 p.m., something like that. I'll let you know officially on the Facebook page as usual though. And on Twitch, I'll update my schedule. I have my Twitch schedule up for the whole week so you know when I'm coming on next. But yep, step-by-step step for both of those Friday and Sunday of this coming week, planning ahead. And I've been doing uh, even more painting. I was on Twitch today just messing around with paint. I was doing some clouds. I'm not going to show you those because those are actually hung up. I did some, well, I can show you this one. This one's still messy, but I was kind of messing around just with lots of texture, doing lots of layering, still not done. Uh, and then I did another cloud one, which is hanging up in my bathroom now. I was trying to do some more personal art, you know? I'm doing a lot of these step-by-step -step paintings, and while I love doing those, I just like the idea of messing around for a little bit on Twitch and uh, just doing my own thing for a bit. I really like the uh, kind of pastel colors. I was doing peaches, pinks, purples. That was what my other painting had too, just a nice little gradient like that. It was a little more dotty and full, but yeah, it was really fun just to mess around. People were chatting at the same time. It was good. And it's fun just to be comfortable with the idea of like making mistakes and then continuing on with these paintings. I really like to kind of leave things very clean step by step, you know, and then today when I was experimenting it was a little more free. I was like, oh yeah, it doesn't really matter if I do a crazy number of layers or, you know, go on top of things 50 times because I won't be teaching it. I'll just be messing around. So yeah, that's what I got up to today. Just lots of painting. Stopped that around, I think it was like 2 p.m. Painted for like a good four or five hours on Twitch, actually. <laughs> and then I had a little break and I'm back now. <laughs> Two in a day. Got a couple more minutes till we start. Oh, let me show you what I painted yesterday too. I was on Twitch yesterday as well. My friend wanted me to paint her cat. So she sent me a few photos of her cat and I made him uh, into this little whimsical scene here. And I think I might teach this one step by step if you guys feel like this is something you'd want to see. You can let me know. Maybe I'll uh, throw this up on the Facebook page too and see if people like it, but I thought it was a nice cute one, a nice little glowing moon. Got a little kitty cat down there with all his fireflies, having a little sniff. And uh, it was actually uh, somebody who came into the chat who said, hey, you should maybe add an owl up here. And I was like, okay, so I added an owl, and it kind of completed the whole thing, I think. That way we have, whoops, the two friends here. Yeah, I just made it a little more interesting of a scene rather than the blank tree, so yeah. Thank you to whoever popped in there. Anyway, we'll see. That'll probably be coming up uh, week after next, probably, because it sounds like next week is pretty filled up. Cap, nice to see you again. 
second time today. <laughs> do my tutorial now. I'm going to do that in a couple minutes. Hmm. Oh, hey, Brooklyn. And Abigail, I'm glad you like. Which one did you like there? Was it the cat or the clouds or Niagara Falls? I showed like four paintings there. <laughs> Niagara Falls, probably say. Anyway, let me know which one you were a fan of. Joanne looks like your cat. Aw. Yeah, this was uh, based on a photo she sent me. It was just a little photo of him like looking up uh, through the doorway. He was trying to look at something outside. Oh, it's cute. I'm glad it looks like yours. Hey, Carol, nice to see you. Awesome, I'm glad you like it. Maybe I will teach it then. I think it's a good one for step by step. It's a nice uh, kind of clean, just lots of nice layers, a couple good techniques in there. Got a nice classic tree with the nice highlights there. Yeah, it was fun to make. Yes, Tina, I keep all of my videos so that I can post them to YouTube so you can expect it uh, much later tonight, probably around midnight, it'll probably be uploaded. Just based on my experience with uh, my internet, it takes usually like two or three hours to fully upload and to fully post it to Facebook, or to YouTube, excuse me. So, uh, yeah, you could paint it probably tomorrow. Ooh, okay, Abigail, thanks. I wasn't, uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be teaching that one because that was more of a personal one, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in a weird cloud moment right now where I want to keep playing around with clouds. So uh, if you pop on Twitch sometime this week, you might see me just messing around with clouds. Again, I don't usually like teach step by step, but I talk about what I'm doing. And if you're inspired, you can bring out a canvas and just paint along with me. Because I think I'm in like teacher mode at all times, even if I'm painting for myself. I'm like, okay, I'm taking white and I'm dabbing it over here and I'm blending over here. So even though it's not a step by step, I'm still talking about what I'm doing. So you could always like half follow along uh, if you wanted to do that. Oh, cute, Joanne. Yeah, uh, that'll be fun for people to customize, obviously, the cat. And honestly, I'm more of a dog person, so I was like, mm, we could even throw a dog in there, probably, too, if people had a little puppy they wanted to throw in. It's kind of a nice, flexible one that way. You could really add any any pet or animal right there. Or even if you don't have a pet, you want to keep it just the owl, that would be cute as well. Yeah. Can't tonight, but I will. Jody. yeah, no worries. You can... Uh, have a look at YouTube whenever I've done that. Kelly says, what is Twitch? Twitch is just another platform. So Facebook is a platform. Twitch is a different platform. Twitch is focused on live streaming. So Facebook has this live streaming aspect, I guess, just kind of like secondary. Uh, but Twitch, that's all it is. It's just live streamers. So I've been messing on there, messing around on there, just uh, kind of popping online for three, four hours at a time. And it's just more likely that I'll find people who have never found me before, right? Like they'll just kind of come to my page. I paint in the art category. There's a bunch of different categories on Twitch. Gaming is a very popular one. Uh, but yeah, art is on there. So yeah, I've been popping in the art channel and uh, painting a little bit. So that's what Twitch is. It's just a live streaming platform. Their whole thing is live streaming. And uh, it's a lot more interactive than Facebook. They have chat, but they have the ability to, I guess, uh, donate through stream very easily. I can have little animations pop up. Uh, if you ever watch me on, on Twitch, I have like multiple cameras set up. And again, this gives me, Twitch gives me the ability to do that a little bit easier where I can have a camera right on my painting and then a camera on me. And it's a whole, whole cool thing. So it's been a lot of fun on there. And again, that's what I do on Twitch, though. You're not missing anything if you're not watching on Twitch, because I'm really just playing around. Usually what I'm doing is I'm making paintings to teach, so they take me a little bit longer to actually create. And then what I do is I reteach them on Facebook when I have, like, the reference done and stuff. So, yeah, it's just a little bit of both. I'll talk more about it maybe this week. I was just trying to get comfortable with the platform first before announcing it, announcing it to Facebook. Uh, but I think what I'll do is I'll post about it tomorrow or Tuesday and kind of uh, tell you a little more details about Twitch and what I do there and uh, when you can find me there. Because I'm trying to put together a nice semi-consistent schedule for myself and for anyone who wants to tune in. Thanks, Corinne. Oh, thanks, thanks. Hope you enjoy this one if you're joining today or later. All good. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad people have been really enjoying them, Abigail. Thank you. Yeah, you can watch, um, 
and I'm still using Facebook, everybody, for a main hub of announcements, I would say. Like, anytime I'm posting a tutorial event or anything else, like any links to YouTube, it's always on Facebook. So it's pretty, uh, pretty good if you're following me there. I would say it's my main hub. And then uh, all these other places are just like little spots that I kind of experiment with. The internet's pretty crazy these days. There's lots of different places you can be going. So I'm trying to see which one works for me, you know? But yeah, Facebook is obviously a lot of fun. I've got all you guys here, so. But hello again to Twitch. <laughs> We've got a few people watching on Twitch, so that's kind of cool too. Got everybody. And uh, yeah, I'm glad YouTube's working out. Again, I had a different plan for YouTube. I was going to be condensing videos and seeing if that worked, but it seems like everybody likes the full length ones anyway, so I'll just continue to uh, post the full length ones. Maybe I'll go back to making some uh, condensed versions a little later, but for now, just uh, yeah, doing what people want. People want the long full length videos, so that's what I'm doing. Okay, okay guys, I've caught up on comments and we're a couple minutes past seven, so Let's uh, officially get started. So welcome everybody to my tutorial live stream. I'm Erin. Thanks for popping in tonight on this nice Sunday evening to end off your weekend with some painting. Uh, today we have this beautiful underwater scene as usual. Didn't name it. I'll think about a name hopefully while I'm painting or if anyone has ideas you can let me know. Under the sea might just be a nice name. I keep kind of referring it to that due to the song clearly. Under the sea. And uh, yeah, I'll teach it to you step by step. So uh, yeah, get your paints ready. I'll be using five different colors today. We have white, black, red, yellow, and phthalo blue. And then we have my usual three brushes, which I use. We've got this large flat brush, medium round brush, and small round brush. Uh, any combo is fine if you want to just use, again, a large and a small, that's totally fine. Uh, you can see there's not a whole lot of details in this one. I think a small one will be beneficial for the fish here, but otherwise you could probably use smalls or, or larges or mediums for pretty much any other step here. Uh, yeah, it's pretty straightforward this one, I would say. And again, lots of room for customization, so think about that. And otherwise I have a cup of paint water, I've got a towel, I would recommend having those close by. Uh, hopefully you're wearing something you don't mind getting paint on. And uh, that's really it for materials. And maybe people are using different things. I know some people like to paint with watercolors or, you know, sketch as I go. You can do some pencil crayons, really whatever you have. Crayons, take your kids' crayons, whatever you want. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, excited to see how it turns out as usual. I'll be encouraging everybody to post their photos after we're done to our Facebook event page. So uh, that's where we'll get to see all of everybody's beautiful photos when we're done. Okay, so that's a quick little intro. If anyone has questions, just throw them in the comments at any time. Otherwise, I'll start with our usual toast. We're gonna do a little toast to painting and then we can get started. So if you're having a little drink, having a little snack, you can raise that up or raise your paintbrush, anything you've got. And uh, here we go. A toast from coast to coast to painting, but not complaining to Bob, the total heartthrob, to you, to where's my phthalo blue, to phthalo blue and to me for willing to see the fun of painting after a cheers or two or three. So cheers or two or three, cheers, cheers. And uh, we'll get started. All right, so I'm gonna switch these two out here. So I'm gonna be painting with you on my blank canvas. Oops. You can watch my reference back there. Okay, so I'll be using uh, my nice large flat brush to begin with, a nice large flat brush. And uh, you can dip that in the water to start. Look at my plate, you guys. See, after doing my uh, my class today, the whole thing is this nice, like, peachy pink purple. I'm a fan. I love it. <laughs> Happy it got a little covered up. Okay. And the first color we're making is going to be a nice dark blue, actually. I don't know why I grabbed my white. Uh, we'll be doing a blue mixed with a tiny, tiny bit of red for the edges just to make it a little more of a dark blue. It's kind of like blue-purple, you could say, but it is definitely mostly blue. I just wanted to add the red to make it a tinge darker, just so it almost looks like a navy in a way on the sides. Just anything a little darker. 
So again, that was blue with the tiniest amount of red just to make it a little bit darker. And I'm using my large flat brush. Ooh, big lift. Okay, so you can see I just grabbed a little smidgen of red, lots of blue in there. You can see how it darkens it up just a little bit compared to the regular blue. That's why I did it, just so I can get some nice dark outsides. And then we can have more of a spotlight in the middle. So I'm going to take that color. I'm going to start not quite in the middle, a little bit over, because I want to leave a little bit of a gap in the middle for my nice spotlight. And I'm going to drag this down to the left and down to the right. And you can see I'm not going all the way down. I like to keep the darkness a little off to the side. So I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom corner. Maybe I'll go more like here. So this is just going to take up kind of the corners of the painting. So I'm just slopping that on, on the left hand side here. Nice big strokes with my large flat brush. And this is going to just stay a nice dark blue. I'm not going to put any streaks in it or anything. It's just going to be a nice solid color over on the sides here. All right, Facebook, my uh, reactions once again aren't working. So if you want to just uh, throw in any thumbs ups in the comments, or you can just tell me when you're ready to go to the next step, that would be helpful. Otherwise, as usual, I'll try and keep us on pace to uh, about two hours. I said this last time and I said, uh, oh, I'm sure I think this will be under two hours. It's a little bit of a simpler painting and then it ended up being exactly two hours. So I'll say it again. I think it's probably going to be under two hours, but we'll see what happens. Hey, Penny, nice to see you. Nice little smile. Thanks for popping in. Are you painting today, Penny? Or are you just popping in to say hey? This will be on YouTube later if you're uh, wanting to paint it a little later. I think that some are. I think we had a lot of people uh, RSVP excited for this one. I think maybe the weather may have pulled them outside, which is totally fine. I totally understand that. It's been a very nice day, at least in KW where I am. It has been very nice. Don't know if you guys had a nice Sunday where you are, but it's very nice and sunny. I spent some time outside on the patio. It was good. After my four hours on Twitch first. And I went a little earlier too. I don't know if that works for you guys, but I was going on at like 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. It's a little different for me to doing it midday, but people were tuning in. I think they were just having a good time at home and doing their Sunday type activities inside and maybe watching me at the same time. I don't know. Okay, so I've got my two sides done. I'll just leave a minute or two for that. And then we're gonna fill this up with more of a medium blue. Hey Susie, thanks for popping in. Yeah, you're welcome. Are you painting along for this one or are you gonna wait till YouTube as well? This will be up uh, later tonight if you're interested. It'll be like probably 11 or 12 o'clock after it spends its time uploading. But I'm glad you're loving them. That Cardinals one was really nice. I'm still seeing people submitting their photos for that one. So pretty. I was very impressed with how soft all of the backgrounds were that I was seeing. I saw some change ups. Uh, some, I saw one do chickadees instead of cardinals. Uh, we had somebody do the large cardinal instead of the two small ones. That was really nice. I believe that was Lori. Awesome. Okay, cool. Feel free to stick around if you want to just have fun watching me paint. But otherwise, yeah, you can look for it on YouTube. Same spot as usual. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Susie. If you have any uh, things that you're waiting to see, let me know in terms of like painting subjects. I still have my nice big list, but I'm still always checking in just to see if I find any other uh, other suggestions or just popular suggestions that I can get to work on. I don't think I'll be on Twitch tomorrow messing around, but maybe I will. We'll see. I don't have it in my schedule, but anything can happen. All right, guys, I'm going to go right ahead here. I'm just going to move on, I think, at a good pace here, just so everyone doesn't have to keep going in the comments and... Uh, doing their thumbs if they're, you can maybe just tell me if I'm going a little quick, how about that? 
So what I'm doing now is I'm going to do some nice medium blue coming down. I'll blend it into the sides here and then just bring it all the way down just until the ocean floor here. So now I need some white paint. So I'm going to pour some white on my plate. I'm still using that same brush. You can wash it off whenever you're ready. Just because we won't be using the purpley blue, we'll just be using plain blue mixed with white. Here's my gigantic plate again. So we're just going to grab a little bit of white. We don't want this blue too, too light yet. So we want to save some lightness for the streaks, right? So I'm mixing blue and white together. And I would call this more of a medium blue, like a nice bright blue. Got nothing too dark, nothing too light. And I'm just throwing this right in the middle. So this is going to be kind of the middle spotlight area. In terms of how far down, you can maybe mark off just until the very bottom. This is definitely less than a quarter. If you want a larger ocean floor, you can definitely raise this up. But I preferred to have more of the open ocean personally. So I kept my ocean floor quite far down on the bottom there. And once again, I'm just stroking up and down. I'm trying to go from the middle outwards, right? So I need to go a little bit to the left, so it's going to be a little angled that way, a little angled that way, and eventually I'll be going straight up and down right in the middle. Hey, Andrew. Yeah, no problem. I think a lot of people are. Thanks for popping in to say hi. Oh, I really appreciate you guys just popping in to say hey. It's always nice to see familiar names, even if you're not staying the whole time. So thanks for coming in. I was just telling everybody, yep, it'll be on YouTube probably much later tonight, so tomorrow is perfect if that's what you're planning for. So everybody, I'll just show you how to blend, just in case you need a little refresher on that one, in case, or maybe you're brand new here, you don't know how to blend. So I'm just taking my brush, moving in between those two colors, so in between the medium blue and the dark blue, and you can see what happens, it combines them makes it a little softer all the way through rather than a harsh edge. So I just blended this one because I had my left hand side done. Now what I'll do is I'll continue to add that medium blue over to the right and then blend that as well. <laughs> little hearts from Lisa, hey. Oh, thanks Kaylian. Again, I was just saying I love how everyone makes a little effort to come in and say hi even if they're not painting. So thanks for coming to say hi. Feel free to watch if you want to just relax and watch me paint for a bit but otherwise no worries this will be ready on youtube by later tonight if you want to do a super late night painting you can do that or just tomorrow i think a lot of people are saying tomorrow <laughs> so that works fine awesome andrew yeah that's great i think it's good to subscribe uh just so that you're notified when the video is actually posted as well because i don't always announce on facebook when the video is up i try to kind of put a little link i guess when i'm putting my little message in the event page but I don't really you know make a big announcement being like the video is ready so it's good to subscribe and then that way you're just notified and you can save the video for later and do all that fun stuff on YouTube. YouTube's good for that all those nice features. Saving the video for later putting it as part of a playlist you can make like a painting playlist you know then you have a whole folder of videos just of things you want to paint with me or with anyone else. Okay, so you can see I'm doing that blending again. So whenever you hit the right hand side, you can just brush up and down in between those two sections. And once again, that'll soften it up and blend them together. So a nice smooth transition from dark to light back to dark. Otherwise, I'm just retaking my medium blue, brushing up and down again, going from the middle, top middle, and coming down. So you can go straight down to the right, to the left, just everything kind of streaking out from that top middle. And for those just joining, I was talking about the upcoming schedule. So uh, if anyone's looking for tutorials, I'm thinking I'll be doing one Friday at 7 p.m. I was thinking the Niagara Falls one would be really nice. So for those waiting for that one, that'll come up very, very soon. And then Father's Day, I haven't decided on a time, but uh, I think that'll be on the Sunday. I think more people were hoping to have this as a Father's Day activity rather than having it ready for Dad. I remember 
there are some people saying, why don't we do it before Sunday so we can get the painting ready to gift to dad? But I'm pretty sure I heard more people saying they'd like it as a literal activity on the Sunday. So we'll stick with Sunday. And uh, yeah, not sure what time, probably earlier in the afternoon though, I would guess around like 1 p.m., 2 p.m., just so we can get all those families in there. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so that's that step. I'll just give an extra minute just in case you're still adding. And then we're gonna go in and streak in some white, do some white streaks. So you can wash off your brush if you are ready to go. And again, no real need to let me know when you're ready to move on. I'm just gonna keep going at my pace here, at the pace that I think is good for most, so. But yeah, I'm glad you subscribed, Andrew. Thanks for doing that. And uh, yeah, I'll make some more announcements on the Facebook page uh, sometime this week about what I'm up to. So I got lots of schedules going now. I've got the tutorial schedule and got my Twitch schedule going, so I wanna make sure everyone knows where I am. Doing lots behind the scenes, you know? And I'm constantly playing around with the setup, trying to make it better and better with the lighting and all my camera angles. So hopefully that's, uh, yeah, making improvements. Oh, thanks Sharon, you got a little thumbs up there. And actually we do need to move on to the next step because we want this uh, to be wet in the background. So let's move right along here. Thanks Karen for the thumb that kind of pushed me through and made me realize about the wet on wet that we're doing. So we've got our nice large flat brush next, or I guess same, we've been using him the whole time. It's a nice big flat brush. Uh, next what I'm doing is I'm grabbing some white paint. So I did wash off this brush before grabbing the white just so it wasn't clobbered with any blue. And I'm gonna be making these nice streaks so it looks more like light is literally shining, left and right, there we go, shining down like that. So I'm gonna grab white on my brush as I just said, and what I'm doing is I'm streaking it down like this. So you might find your first streak looks really, really prominent as mine does, but if you go on top and just brush on top a few times, it'll blend in. So I'm just going along those edges, bring it down. And I'm just softly doing this. I don't wanna to press too, too hard because I do want some of the white to stay behind, right? I don't wanna remove it all of it. So if I were to press very hard, it would probably remove most of the white. It would probably blend into that medium blue and then it would totally disappear. But instead I want it to stay behind a little. So I'm still grabbing more white. I'll do the same thing again. You don't have to start all the way from the top. If you want to make a streak kind of more in the middle like this, you can start in the middle, brush up and down a few times. I think I'll do one on the right hand side here. And I'm personally not adding any streaks in the dark areas here, so the left and right corners. I'm just sticking more in this uh, spotlit area with the medium blue. If you really like this streaky technique, you could add it everywhere, but I think it kind of makes sense, honestly, that it would stay more in the middle. So start with the middle and then you can decide if you want to add some more. It is a fun technique though. I love the wet on wet technique. Getting all these nice streaks in there. So again, I purposely don't really blend it in. I, I like to wipe on top a couple times and then just leave it alone because I do like having different shades of this blue. I have some like pure white popping through. I have some light blues, some very light blues. So again, that's what, uh, that's what happens when you do a nice light application up and down. So I'm using just a little amount of pressure. I'm not pressing too hard in. I'm just letting it almost drag off and then just brushing on top a few times. So again, experiment. You can do as much or as little of this as you want. I think I'll maybe do this once or twice more just on top of the streaks I already have. So that way I'm gonna kind of lighten them up. So I'm gonna grab a little extra white, maybe lightly apply it right on top. And then maybe like right up here. Just kind of lightly applying it as well. Cool, yeah, I think I'll keep it like that. So once again, up to you how much or how little you wanna do. I would say I streaked up that whole middle section personally. Just to make it nice and bright and light in there, as if the light is really, really shining down. Yeah, when I was creating this painting, this is exactly what I started with. I had no idea where I was going with it. 
I just knew I wanted to make an underwater scene. And I liked the idea of like a nice little beam of light coming down, just like you see when you're underwater, kind of beams of light kind of shining through. So from here, it was a lot of experimentation. I was covering things up after I did this. I played with the rocks a lot. I even had a whole thing over here, which I covered up. Anyway, I'll get to that later. Give you another quick half minute and then we'll go right along. We'll do this uh, beach floor here. So it might, might, it might, it might mix, Ooh, it might mix a little with the blue as we apply it, but I'm sure if we apply lots of paint, it'll be fine. We can just kind of overlap, allow it to blend a tiny bit, but for the most part, we want it to be a nice harsh edge just right here. You can even wipe some blue away if you need to, just to make sure it's a little dry. Good. That's another thing I was doing today when I was painting my clouds. I was using my finger a lot. <laughs> just like, I don't need a paintbrush, just tap with my finger. It's all good. Okay, guys, I'm going to start mixing that nice uh, beach color, a nice sand color, I should say. We're not really at the beach, are we? Is it the beach if it's underwater? I don't think so. I don't know. Nice little sandy bottom. Let's say that. So I'll be using four colors. Well, three colors. Let's see if I need a fourth. I think I only used three. So for that nice light sand color, it's kind of like a beige color. I use light, red, and yellow. I almost said four because sometimes I add a little bit of black in there if I want to make my sand a little kind of dirtier almost. But I'm pretty sure I just used three just to keep it nice and clean and beige. You can see it's a pretty bright sandy beige color. So let's start with that and I'll let you know if I decide otherwise. I painted this one two weeks ago and I already forget. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'll lift you up. My baby's growing. All right, so I'm going to mix uh, red and yellow together to begin with. I like to make just an orange to start. There it is. And you're only going to need a tiny amount of orange, really, so I know I poured a lot of red and yellow there, but I really don't need all of that. And then I'm going to mix in lots and lots of white. You can see it makes it more of that kind of sandy. If the light wouldn't uh, reflect right off of it, I could show you. <laughs> see, kind of there. That's a little better. So red and yellow for orange, lots of white for that beige. And I would say mine is a little more yellow tone. So if after you mix the white in there, it looks too orange or too kind of pinky red, just grab a little extra yellow. See that there, it's coming off nice and beige. I was just saying, grab a little extra yellow, mix it into that uh, final beige mixture and you'll see it comes off more of a yellowy beige. But I would say it is mostly white in this one, mostly white and just a small dab of that orange you mixed. So again, in total, yellow, red, and white. Emphasis on the white, less of the red and yellow. So any beige color for the bottom will do. You can see mine's just more, yeah, your normal, typical beige. And I'm just throwing that on the very bottom here. And I was saying before, yes, okay, it will cover up, that's good. I was saying before, if your blue is a little wet, it might mix in a little bit. But I did that quick little wipe with my finger, and that really helped uh, just get off any blobs of blue. Otherwise, I'm just making sure I'm reloading paint as I go along this top edge. Oh, there's some mixing in, but just wipe on top. Whoops, wipe on top, it'll mix in. Good demonstration, excellent. <laughs> so I kind of went above there, I'll fix that in a second. So again, just use lots of paint for this. That way you can really cover up any blues that might be kind of leaking through. I find if there's a little bit of blue, I just wipe it and help it kind of blend out into the beige. So I'm just gonna try and uh, apply a little more here and then even out that top. In the end, you really only see the middle, so even if you want to keep the uh, 
left and right side a little messier, that's fine. It's really just the middle you end up seeing. So if you want to really concentrate on that area, just that middle I would say is what you're worried about. There we go. See that blue streak? I'll just keep blending it in. It'll, uh, it'll disappear. Ah, <gasps> amazing Paige! It's such a fun idea and I saw a few people saying that too, how it would be fun. Was it you or someone else? Someone was saying they're literally doing like an underwater lesson, I guess, soon or some sort of a study. And they're like, oh, this painting will go perfect with that. We can all paint an underwater scene now that we're studying kind of the ocean and all the creatures and stuff. I thought that was such a nice little coincidence that worked out that way. For art class, I don't know if that's, uh, if you're talking about just art class at home page or if that's uh, quite literally for school because I heard some people are literally using this for school and I thought that was so cool. They're using this as like art time essentially. I don't really know how school is working online but I guess maybe you're given a certain number of hours to be doing certain things and people have been using my videos and tutorials as like their art time for school which I think is so cool. Like kind of earning credits almost just for following along and making some art, so it's pretty neat. Okay, so I'm just grabbing a tiny bit more beige. I'm trying to get rid of that small little band of blue, personally. There we go. Not worried about the sides as much. Again, you might see a little messiness on the edges, but that's going to be covered up super momentarily anyway. So I'm just kind of stacking on the beige here. There we go, getting rid of that blue. Last little blob. There we go, bye bye. Bye bye. All right, got a nice beige ocean floor. Okay, I'll give a quick minute and then we're gonna go right onto the rocks. I'm going to prep my plate so I'm not being left behind here. Using a nice gray for the rocks. So black and white. Okay, all right, so I'll just go right ahead to the rocks. So I'll just bring this forward. We can have a little look at them. We've got lots going on on our rocks. So my rocks are just a nice dark gray. So what I did is I laid down some dark gray just as a base. And then what I did is I went in with light gray and you can kind of see some little streaks just to give a little more texture to the rocks, give it a little bit of bumpiness, a little bit of highlights with this light coming down, of course. So yeah, that's what I'll be doing, just uh, a nice dark gray and then a light gray on top. There we go. So I'm going to use my medium sized brush for that. And I guess I used it for the sand, sorry if I didn't clarify, but sand you could have used any brush really. Yeah, as you can for this step, but I prefer the medium sized brush for the rocks. I'm going to mix together a nice very dark gray, so it's going to be lots of black with just a little bit of white. Give this another good lift here. So you can see how dark that is compared to the black. It's very close, just a little bit lighter. I want to start with a nice dark gray base. Okay, and I'm going to start, looks like, just above halfway up for this first rock on the left here. You can start really wherever you want. Again, it's your ocean. You can do whatever you want with it. I'm just kind of wiggling my brush down as I go to make it nice and wiggly and bumpy. And I don't want to go all halfway across because I want to leave a little bit of ocean floor. So I am trying to kind of come down pretty quickly here with that gray. Then you can just fill it in.
And once again, that beach color or that beige color. And I keep calling it a beach. It's not really a beach if it's underwater. That color is going to be nice and fresh and wet, so I expect that it'll mix a little with the gray, but as long as you keep applying the gray, the gray will definitely overtake it because it is the much darker color. And if there's a lot of that beige color on there, you could even wipe it off a little bit just so it's not really interfering. I might even do that just to show you how that works. I'm just going to give it a quick wipe after all that hard work. <laughs> That's why I said you don't need to worry about the size. It just gets covered up anyway. So I just wiped off some just so it's not super, super fresh and wet. And that'll make it easier when I go in with my dark gray. You can see it goes right on top. Or you can take your time, you know. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep the steps going here, so doing lots of layers. So I'm trying to kind of smooth it out because I will be adding some highlights on top after so I don't want this too streaky quite yet. But if you see some brush strokes here and there of course that's okay. I'm trying to keep it a pretty consistent dark gray. So yeah a nice big rock coming down here. And I do a similar thing on the other side. I just changed it up a little bit just so it's not too symmetrical. I just didn't want it like big rock, big rock. So what I did for this rock is I made it a little bit shorter, a little smaller. And I also made a little bit of a bottom to it. So rather than bringing it all the way to the bottom as if we can't see where it's uh, ending, I brought it just to about here and then I brought it across just so we can kind of see a little bit of a different layer. We'll have this right hand rock back a little further, right? So dark gray. Again, I'm going to start a little lower down this time. Same thing though, I'm just kind of bumping down to the left, down to the left. Doing little wiggles with my brush as I come down. And again, right when I reach maybe like halfway down the sand, let's say, I'm just going to cut across to the right and end it anywhere in that bottom right corner. So again, it looks like this one's a little bit further away from us because we can see the bottom of it. I'm going to re-grab that little phoenix I had there just to wipe away some of the sand. And I'll keep adding that gray. So just filling it in the same way using my medium sized brush. Trying my best to kind of smooth it out, but like I said before, if it's a little bit streaky, that's okay. I'll be moving right along to adding streaks in there anyway for some nice highlights. So no big if you're seeing that already. So we do want the rock to have some texture. We don't want it to be totally flat, right? So I'll show you how to do that as the next step. Here we go, so we got two nice rocks. I think I'll make this a little more of a point, actually. It's a little rounded. I did like the idea of making it more of a point just to make it look like it's kind of sinking into the sand, into a little point there. There we go. Cool. There it is. Okay, I'll just give a minute or two in case anyone's still adding. Those were kind of big spots there. And then like I said, what we're going to do is we're going to add some highlights on top of those. Hopefully everyone's blue is relatively dry. Let me just touch that again. Oh, mine's not. <laughs> See that little finger mark I just left there? Oh, I thought it was completely dry. I actually just leave it because I'll put my fish there anyway. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, we'll want that blue to be dry because I did add our fishies, just at least a base color, uh, after we're done the rocks. So I'm sure that'll be dry in the next couple minutes. And of course, we want to leave our rocks to dry a little bit before adding all of our 
kind of sea creatures on there, at least the starfish, our seaweed, the coral. So we might even have a couple minutes where we need to uh, just have a little bit of a break, we'll see. When I painted this one on by myself, I was leaving this like hours in between each step just because I didn't know what I wanted to do, so wasn't really thinking of drying times and stuff. I was just kind of going at my own pace that day, so see how it turns out. It's pretty dry. Let me know if anyone's is super, super wet still, the blue I'm looking at. I feel like my uh, white streaks are just a little bit shiny and wet, but otherwise, see, that's where my fingerprint went. <laughs> otherwise, it's pretty matte everywhere else, so hopefully we're on the same page. All right, everybody, I'm just going to add some highlights to our rocks now. So I pointed out earlier that I grabbed some light gray and kind of just bumped it around the top edge a little bit, maybe inside of the rock a little bit, just to give it a little more shape and a little more texture. So I'm going to grab my white and mix it into my dark, dark gray. So I'm making more of a light, light gray. So I'm using my medium brush. Mixing that into my dark gray. Okay, so that's what you got there. And I'm just using my medium brush. And like I said, I'm just very quickly kind of going along these top edges, doing some little quick curves. So I'm just following along that outside edge. It doesn't even need to really hug the outside edge. It's okay if you have a little bit of darkness on the other side. But that's where I start, just kind of looking at my little bumps and following them down. See that? And you can be a little messy with it too. You don't need to stick all the way to the outside. You kind of bring them down here and there as if you're making layers of rocks. And you can even add some further in like this. So you just kind of create your own little curves or your own little angles, sharp edges. And that way your whole rock gets a little bit of texture, right? See that? So it's not just a plain gray boulder. Look at me using my finger again. There we go. <laughs> So yeah, nothing too, nothing too detailed. Honestly, it's a, it's a pretty quick little step there. Just adding small little bumps, just to give some texture there. Ooh, Penny. That would be nice to throw a nice little sea turtle. That's such a good idea, with the nice spotlight on him, just right there. Yeah, I really think I'm gonna be probably teaching these yellow fish, and everyone's gonna be like, ah, I'm not even doing that. <laughs> I think I'll be mostly on my own for that, probably. I think everyone has their own little plans for what they want as their centerpiece here. So that'll be really fun to see. And that's honestly the best part. I saw some people changing up a painting recently. They're like, sorry, I didn't follow along. I was like, don't be sorry. Oh my gosh. That's my favorite when people change it up. It means that they really felt comfortable enough to do their own thing and they want they did something, you know, that they really wanted to do. So I'm very happy to see it. No stories needed. So I'm just doing the same thing on the other side here. I'm just kind of hugging along now the left hand edge, of course, so just the top edge, and then doing the same thing going into the rock. So just doing some quick little angles or bumps and change it up. You can do some, you can see that are a little more angled, like sharp. You can do some that kind of wave around. They don't have to be going down. They can kind of just wave across if you want. But I would say another quick key is not to overdo it because you want these streaks to be prominent, right? You don't want them to mix too, too much. And the more you add, the more they're going to disappear, actually. They're going to all kind of mold together and be a little messier. So if anything, you need to kind of restrain yourself from doing too many for this one. And if you do find it's looking a little too busy or just something isn't quite right, very easy. You can just go on top with some dark gray again. Just kind of smooth it all out, start fresh, and try again. Just kind of learn with, uh, learn from what happened and uh, try again. Good thing about acrylics, you can just go right on top and uh, try again. <laughs> it's 
So I'll give everyone a minute or two there. I probably even added more texture on these than I did in the background ones, just so you know. So you could keep it a little more simple or you could uh, really bump it up like I did here. Let's have another check in our background here. a little teeny bit wet but again I do uh, two layers for my yellow fish there just to keep them nice and bright so if we get a little bit of mixing when we do that first layer that won't be an issue I just want to make sure nobody has you know really really wet blue back there so if you do you can give yourself a couple extra minutes I'm still giving at least a minute or two before I go ahead but just so you know that if it mixes a teeny bit that's okay hey Heather oh excellent wow that was quick Amazing. I'm so glad to hear. I'm sure that takes a lot off your back. Amazing. And Barry too. You can really say Barry now. <laughs> cool. Oh, that makes me so happy. That's good. Waiting to hear back. Awesome. I assume you just got here, Heather. You're just popping in to say hey. I have a lot of people doing that today. I think it was a pretty nice day where everybody is and they're uh, enjoying the outside. Still so nice and bright outside. Till like 8.30 it can be outside now. Okay, I'll give one more quick minute and then we'll go right on to the fish here. Again, we're going to do a nice base layer. So just so you know that, we'll be doing multiple layers for the fish. I'm just going to prep my plate by adding a little extra white. Yeah, I guess there is that extra step. We don't want to be too relaxed yet, I guess. Yeah, you should be fine, though, as long as nobody beats you to it. I think that's the hardest part is, like, beating others to the punch almost. At least my friends in major cities say that. It's like they think they have a spot locked down, and then someone will actually swoop in and offer more than the asking rent or asking price, and it's like, ah, oh, dang. They're all renting apartments, though. I just didn't know rent battles can happen. I thought it was like, oh, you pay the price, you're good. But people apparently swoop in and they go, no, no, I'll pay more than that. <laughs> anyway. You're on the ball, it sounds like, so you can keep looking if it doesn't go through. But I'll hope for you. You're in my thoughts. We'll help manifest it all together. Yeah, sure, Celine. So the rock shadow was just adding kind of like a medium gray. I was using this medium sized brush and I was just going along this outside edge kind of bumping along. And then I did some little bumps in the middle here. So I was just taking my brush. I'm not going to brush it on again, but I'll use this, this to demonstrate just going kind of bumping over and down, over and down, over and down, doing small little bumps or even angles. You can see some little sharp edges just to give lots of texture. So again, I started on the outside edge, but then I brought it inside as well, just to make it look like the rock has lots of different layers all on top of one another. Oh my gosh, Heather, that's why you're a little worried. I understand now, yes. Holy moly. I've heard Barry Rent has skyrocketed too, not even just recently, but in the last like five years or so, and it's one of the more expensive places. And I was kind of surprised to hear that. I've never rented in Barry. I was like, really? My friend was telling me that. Oh, all good, all good. Awesome. Yeah, it'll be up on YouTube probably late night tonight. So after late night tonight, you're good to go. You can check it out on YouTube for sure. That's fun doing haircuts. <laughs> Still haven't cut my hair this whole time, this whole quarantine time. Three months going. I guess it's not as necessary because I like my long hair, but I could use a trim real soon. Might look up a YouTube tutorial soon and maybe do my own trimming hair. I saw a really cool technique where somebody put their hair in a... Oh, it looked kind of sketchy, but it looked like it worked. They put their hair in a ponytail kind of near the front and let it all hang down. They just kind of went like snip, snip, snip like this. And then when they brought it back and kind of released the ponytail, it created some nice layers. So <laughs> I was like, that's some magic. That's some uh, <laughs> crazy stuff. But if it works, it works. I might try it. I don't think I can really screw it up that hard, you know? It's just long hair. It's all kind of layered and weird anyway right now, so. Yeah, that's wild, Heather. I can't believe that. Because Toronto's insane. I'm obviously aware of that. 
guess Barry's just the place to be. <laughs> it is kind of nice though, because it's still city, but further north. Got that lake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's pretty unbelievable though to think that. Toronto's just known for being like the most expensive. Okay guys, I'm gonna go on and do our little fishies here. So I was saying earlier that I do two layers for the fishies just to make sure they're nice and bright because we're going on top of a blue background. Uh, so what I do is I do a nice white layer to begin with. So I would say any fish that you're doing, even if you're not following along with my cute little yellow ones, I will still do a light, uh, a white layer, not a light layer, a white layer, uh, just so you're kind of covering up any of those blues. And then that way, once the white dries, we're going to go over with whatever colors we want and it'll stick a little bit nicer and be a little more kind of smooth and clean on top. So, or any sea creature, again, I shouldn't even just say fish. Got some white here. And I'm just going to do the shape of my fish. So what I started with was the tail. And that's more of like a triangle. So I'm going to keep my one fish a little over to the left, just like in my reference there. And I'm going to start with a little triangle. So my triangle is pointing right, so that's going to be my tail. See so it right there. Is it Heather? I guess I never really look at the real estate here. I know it's grown for sure, or increased, I guess I should say. I've lived here for about five years, and I, I still rent. So I'm kind of lucky in that I guess I'm kind of in some sort of a rent, uh, you know, I have I have a price and they can only increase it a certain percentage each year. So maybe I'm far below at this point. I don't know how far below I am, like the average. I feel like I pay pretty cheap rent just compared to what I'm hearing from friends in Toronto and Barrie, etc. So I'm usually feeling pretty lucky, but... Who knows, maybe I'm just oblivious to the <laughs> rent prices here because I haven't looked around recently. But yeah, I know the real estate market has for sure grown and increased. KW is growing at a crazy rate too. And uh, yeah, after this triangle, what I do is I kind of swoop in. So I'm going to swoop to the left a little bit and then swoop right to create kind of like this curved edge. See that on there? Just for this particular fish. I should really look up what kind of fish this was. I don't know what it is. <laughs> I just typed in tropical fish on Google Images and uh, chose a fish I liked. <laughs> if anyone knows the nice yellow fish I'm painting, let me know. <laughs> so I'm just going to curve it again. To the left, and then over to the right, so similar to the top part, over to the left, and then to the right. And this kind of curves a little further up and then it starts to curve down as I get to the other side. Just going to clean up the bottom a little bit, same thing, curving down, starts to come in on the other side. Huh, that's crazy Heather, I didn't know we were all on par together. I just kept hearing about Toronto Berry, maybe that's more of a recent thing? I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> very possible it's been for a while again I haven't looked around at new places in a long time I'm happy where I am so I'm not at the stage of buying a house yet so especially with everything going on not quite ready for that <laughs> so you can see everybody I'm just filling it in as I go and I said earlier if it mixes a little with blue that's totally fine uh, or you might see a little bit of streakiness. That's kind of the whole point of this layer, right? It's just a nice base layer. So if you see a little streakiness or some blue moving in there, no worries. But I'm just filling it in just to kind of see how my shape's looking as I'm almost completing the fish now. Really the last step is just going to be pinching these two curves together to make a little nose. It kind of has a little pointy mouth and nose area. So you're just kind of meeting in the middle making a nice little point. And that's my tropical fish. So I've got one. Oh, he moved over a little bit. That's okay. So I kept mine, I guess, a little over to the left. It looks like I extended this guy a little bit more. He's more in the middle. He's like, hello, I'm right here. 
So I'll add my little guy just maybe below here. He's still a little below in my original, so that works. So if you want to copy mine, if you want to replicate mine, I'm doing now a smaller version of what I just did. So you can start with the tail again if you want, or you can start with the nose. I was just about to start with the nose, but maybe I'll try and keep it consistent for you. So I'm now doing a triangle going the opposite way. All right. And again, I'm starting him a little further down just so we can kind of meet up. I was kind of uh, picturing this is kind of like mama baby situation, parent child situation, big fish, little fish, you know, so they can do whatever you want. Create your own story with your little sea creatures. And same thing, what I'm doing is I'm just doing a curve kind of into the tail and then up and around. Curve into the tail and then down and around. Oh, that got a little messy there. If you'd rather use a small brush, maybe your medium brush is causing a few issues like mine is, you can definitely switch down. But I do like to try my best to stick with my medium sized brush just because it really smooths out the paint nicely. And that's what I really want for this uh, base layer is to keep some nice smooth paint happening. So I'm doing my best to work with this larger brush just for the sake of some smooth paint. And again, I'm going to try and close this little mouth and nose up a little earlier just to keep this fish a little smaller. Little mini guy. And I think I'll just curve out the bottom a bit more. It looks a little uneven. Rounding out the top a little bit. There we go. Helps to look at it straight on just so you can really see what's going on. I'm kind of looking from the side. Sometimes that messes with uh, where things are going. Hey, Elaine, thanks for popping in. Oh, you just finished your cardinals. Oh my gosh. Did you post them? I've been looking all day. People were posting them all day today. So I think people were using their Sunday as their cardinal day. Can't wait. And then Dorothy. Awesome. No worries, Dorothy. I believe I saw your cardinals, I think. Unless it was another Dorothy. I remember saying I love them. Pretty sure it was you. But yeah, no worries. That's what YouTube's for. It's always there. Okay, it's still looking a bit uneven. I think I need to, yeah, I need to bring this top edge out a little bit more. So I'm just going to work on that on mine for now. You can keep shaping yours out a little bit if you need to keep working on yours. Again, I'm assuming we're all doing slightly different things for this little centerpiece here center creatures. Just based on all the little photos I was seeing, we had lots of Nemo's being thrown in the comments and Dory's, Mermaids, Ariel's. So you can really add anything you want there. That's a little more even. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I should really figure out what fish this is so I can really say what fish it is. I just typed in tropical fish on Google Images. Maybe I'll see here. But I like the yellow, honestly. That's why I chose the yellow one. I thought it complemented all the other colors we had going on. I'll just give, give another quick minute in case anyone's doing their base layer of whatever creature they're doing. I guess I'll mention real quick too, uh, because this is a base layer, we do want it to dry, not like quickly, but just at least evenly. So I would just make sure you don't have any big blobs of white. So if you want to take your medium sized brush and just kind of smooth things out a little bit, if you have any blobs hanging around, that would be beneficial and I'm sure that will help you later. So just kind of sweeping across with a clean brush just to really help kind of press the paint down, smooth it down. That'll help it dry nice and evenly and a little quicker just so it doesn't cause issues later. And again, I'll point out if you have any streakiness going on, you can see how maybe some bristles have moved the white paint around a little bit, or you can see some blue through. Don't worry about it. That's why we're doing the base layer. So we can have things like that in the first layer, and then the second layer will be nice and clean. So here's my little guys. I just don't know what they're called. Oh, they have found a nice chart. Butterfly fish, is that correct? That's what it looks like. 
Oh, cute. Okay, I guess this is a butterfly fish, everybody. Again, I just typed in tropical fish, and I was like, all right. Butterfly fish. Cute. Okay. That's what's going on on mine. Nice butterfly fish. Okay, so we've got our base layers down. Let's add some plants. We can have some seaweed. We can have some coral, a little starfish if you want. I'm going to teach you all of those if you want to add any of them, all of them, none of them. That's all your choice. So let's start with the seaweed. That's what I remember starting with here. So pretty straightforward for the seaweed. I just use different shades of green. I use a medium sized brush and I'm literally just using the tip of the brush to make a nice thin tip and then pressing down a little harder as I bring it down. You can see I intersect the seaweed a little bit just to get some layers in there, some darker greens, lighter greens. And then I have this big guy here, which I'll go through nice and slow with you just so you know what I did there, but he's just a little extra something amongst all the regular kind of seaweed plants there. So I'll get to him, but for now I'm going to start with dark greens and then I'll do some light greens for the seaweed, okay? So I'm using a medium sized brush, mixing together whoa, yellow and blue on my plate. And I'm using more blue than yellow because I'm starting with a nice dark green. Oh, messy, messy. All right. So again, starting with a nice dark green. So I would say you're probably using more blue than yellow because more blue will make it darker. See how dark that's already looking? So a nice dark green. And again, we'll layer on some lighter greens after. Okay. So I personally like to start at the top of the seaweed and then come down that way. I can kind of plan where the seaweed is going, like how high up it's going, because I'm literally starting at the top. And I just start by using the tip of the brush, and then what I'll do is I'll increase the pressure as I come down to make it a little bit wider as I go. Maybe I'll bring this forward just so you can see a nice close-up. So anywhere you want. You can start wherever. I'll start right here. Just kind of slowly wiggling down. And you can choose where you want to end it, of course. So I did end a couple right on the edge to make it look like the seaweed was kind of coming from behind the rock. So I'll start with those ones just because those ones are further in the background, right? So you can see how my pressure changed there. I used a little extra pressure to make it a little wider at the bottom and then keeping the nice thin tip at the top. Uh, let's see, we'll go up here. Maybe this time I'll go on top of the rock so it looks like this piece of seaweed is literally hanging on right there rather than behind. Let's go, I'm just trying to mimic what I did here, just trying to keep it as close as possible. Let's throw another one here and change up the width of course. If you use a little less pressure all the way down you'll get, you know, a thinner piece of seaweed and that way you're getting some variety in there. I think that's important, lots of variety. I'll bring that one a little further down as well. So you can see I'm really scattering them. I've got some hiding behind the rock, kind of resting right at the edge here. Some came down further. There we go. And then whenever you're ready, you can do some light greens as well. So I'm just going to mix more yellow into my existing green. You can even grab a little bit of white if you want. Both of those work to lighten up your green to make it a little bit brighter. I personally like using mostly yellow though, that way it stays more of the bright green. The white kind of meets the green a little bit. See it light dark. There we go. I can grow extra yellow. Look at how messy this is getting. I'm gonna get a whole color palette on here soon. Might as well just make this into a rainbow. Okay, so I've got a nice lime green. I'm just doing the exact same thing. Uh, I'm going to be a little more conscious about crossing over seaweed now, though, just to get lots of layers. So I'm going to want to cross them over. So I've got my light green ready to go. And I'm just going to start maybe here. See that? So I really tried my best to actually overlap, and then that way I'm getting some layers going on. Once again, you can really end these anywhere. I'm just kind of 
cleaning up the bottom here so it makes it look like it's really resting right on top of the rock. And then coming up. Uh, let's go up here maybe. Yeah, I really like the look of them kind of crisscrossing over one top, on top of another. So I really like to try and make them do that whenever I can. So yeah, that was some kind of wiggled the opposite way almost. Maybe I'll go right here. Go. I'll do a couple smaller ones, maybe coming out here. And I kind of point them a little bit out here just to kind of fill up this spot too, just so it's not totally forgotten about. Okay, what else here? Maybe I'll just add one or two more. I don't want to clutter it up too much. I liked it a little more open, I know, when I was doing it. Just so we really see all the individual pieces of seaweed and it's not just too filled up. But I'm sure filling it up would be nice too. Let's give it a different look. And I'll do like one more right there. Cute. And again, I am leaving this spot open because we have a nice little starfish and I will also be adding a big plant right here so I'm not too worried about covering up that very middle spot. So I'll just leave that here for a quick minute for you to look at. Then we can do that nice big, uh, big leafy plant right after. Do that next. I'll be using more of the, I actually did light green for the stem and then a darker green for the leaves. So you can keep the light green ready on your medium size brush. Let's just go right ahead into that. So it's really just another piece of seaweed really. It's just a lot thinner. So I start with a nice thin line coming down and then I'll fill it up with leaves. So you can grab your kind of lighter green on your medium sized brush. You can even wipe it on the edge of your plate to help line up those bristles a bit. And then I'm going to start way up high. You can see it's a lot taller than the rest of them. It's really the star of the show amongst all the other seaweed. Just trying to do a relatively thin line. Same thing, kind of wiggling as I come down. And I'm going to go all the way down to about here, I think. And that's just going to be kind of like the stem, I guess because we're adding all these nice leaves on that little stem. Just reapplying a little green there. There we go. So I try and keep it thin. It doesn't have to be the thinnest though because we are going to be just filling it up with leaves anyway. So it's all good. Awesome, Jennifer, no worries. Oh, you guys are so kind. There's been so many of you tonight who just are popping in to say hello and you're like, oh, I can't paint today. Totally fine. Thank you so much for popping in. I really appreciate it. Just to say, hey, Jennifer. Next weekend. Cool. Yeah, I know a lot of, uh, I heard a lot of families were looking forward to this with their kitties. So that'll be fun. You can really take your time together, customize the way you want. Yeah. This will be on YouTube by later tonight. So it'll be nice and ready for next weekend for sure. Okay, so I have that stem up, everybody. I'm just going to put some leaves on top now. So I'm going back to my dark green. So if you need to remix the dark green, it was lots of blue with just a little bit of white this time, or a little bit of yellow, excuse me. <laughs> I'm mixing up my colors, it's not a good thing. And I'm just gonna be adding some leaves, just very uh, spaced out. And I'll show you a nice close up, just if you wanna see. So I don't really, like it's filled up, but you still see lots of spaces in between. So what I do is I just take kind of the tip of my brush here do some quick little strokes. I start a little smaller and then I make them bigger, bigger, bigger with more pressure. Uh, Kelly, the color of the stem is a nice light green. So see how it matches that guy there? And then I did a dark green for the leaves. Just to switch it up, we got two tones of green in there. I'm sure you could do both dark green or both light green, but some for some reason I chose both. <laughs> so light green for the stem. All right, so let me show you these little leaves here. So just using the tip of my brush now, 
And I'm gonna start at the very top and I'm just using the tip at this angle here. So I'm not going straight at it. I'm not going straight down. I'm going like at a 45. And then I'm just gonna use the tip and brush down into the stem. And it creates a small little leaf shape. So that's just the little top leaf. It's gonna be nice and small. And then I'm doing that same technique coming down the sides, just kind of angling down to the right or down to the left. So here's my tip again with that nice dark green. Just pressing lightly with the tip and then brushing down into the stem. Pressing lightly, brushing down into the stem. And you can see I'm keeping these a little smaller to begin with. Pressing down, stroking into the stem. And again, this is the medium round brush. This is how you get those nice strokes, is with a medium round brush. Uh, once again, you can see I am spacing these out, so I'm leaving some gaps in between. And as I come down, I'm trying to press harder as I stroke, and then that way I'm getting some wider and just generally larger leaves. I'm just going to overlap anything that this goes on top of. I'm kind of picturing this is on top of everything. So you can just overlap any seaweed that might be close by. So I think it's best not to overthink. It's literally just stroking with your brush, using some pressure. And I'll go up here, same thing. Stroke, stroke, stroke. So on the right hand side, you can see I'm kind of matching up with the other side and this time I'm just angling down to the left. So I'm coming from the top right, coming down to the stem. Down, 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 down. And again, I match them up. You could um, kind of offset them if you want, but I liked the idea of having them in little pairs. They almost like, like make little V shapes on the way down, you know? I just thought it looked kind of clean that way. And that's that. So I'm gonna pull it back. You can see in total, I might make these guys a little bigger just to really get that small to large aspect. I think maybe I started making them a little smaller again. So you can just stroke on top a second time, making them a little bigger if you need to, just like me. Pressing a little harder. There we go. I think you can really see a big difference now as it comes down. Yeah. Cool. So I'll give everyone a quick minute or so if you're still working on that fancy plant. And uh, what should we do next? Let's do a little starfish next. It's right below all the seaweed. He's kind of hiding amongst all of it. So we can do him. And we just got our coral and then finishing off our fishies to go. Oh boy. Red, yellow, blue. I just need orange, green, purple. And I'm all set. Oh no, I'm out of water. <laughs> Painting's exhausting. I need lots of water. <laughs> Okay, let's go right ahead here. So I'm doing my little starfish next, as I said. Uh, you can use either the medium size or the teeny tiny detail brush here. I think I'll do the medium size just because, like I said before, it's nice for smoothing out paint and to get more of a smooth look for that starfish. I'm going to want to use something with a few more bristles rather than a small detail brush. The small detail brush, it just kind of moves the paint around a little too much for me, uh, creates some gaps and kind of uh, moments where you can kind of see through the paint. So using something with more bristles allows the paint to kind of apply a little thicker, a little smoother. So that's why I'm going to try this, even though the uh, starfish is nice and small. Maybe what would help as well is uh, if you're nervous about using a medium sized brush, you could use the small brush to kind of sketch out the star and then fill in with this one if you want more of the smooth look like I'm doing. But yeah, anything works, I'm sure. So I'm making kind of a pale orange, that's how I'd describe it. So it's going to be similar to what we did with our beige. We're starting by mixing red and yellow together to make a nice orange color. And the only difference is this time we're not clobbering it with white, we're just going to add a little bit of white. So it just kind of softens it up a little bit. I wouldn't call it a coral color, wouldn't call it creamsicle, it's just 
somewhat of a more pale orange, just compared to your regular orange, it's just a little more pale. And of course starfish can be more pink as well, so if you'd rather a nice bright pink starfish, you can totally do that. I was looking at a reference of a nice orange starfish, so that's what I'll do. So, uh, yeah, starfish five points. And what I did to make it look like it's kind of attached to the rock is I just kind of curved a couple points here and there so you can see how instead of coming straight out, straight out, straight out, I did a couple straight guys and then I did some that were a little curvy. So it looks like he's, in my opinion, it looks like he's kind of hanging on, grasping onto certain rocks there. So curving them here and there. I find that helped with the overall shape rather than a literal star, you know? We don't want the star in the sky, we want a starfish. So I'll start with uh, kind of the top point. So I'm just using the tip of my brush once again at a 45 degree angle down like this. That helps really get the tip nice and thin when I'm using it. And I'm just kind of starting with a pretty straight, I would say straight tip there. So once again, I use the tip of my brush so you get a nice thin tip. Then as I drag down, I'm pressing down on the bristles here and that spreads it out so you get a nice wide area as it comes down. I'll do another straight one coming out to the left, so starting with the tip, a little bit of pressure, increasing pressure as I come in. So that's my second one there, it's kind of angling out to the left, up and left. And you can see, because I'm using that medium sized brush, everything's coming on nice and smooth, nice and thick. Not too thick, but thick enough that it's covering that gray, it's not moving the paint around, it's just applying it in one nice smooth fashion. Okay, I'll do a third arm coming out to the right, like he's saying, yay! Um, but yeah, this one maybe curves a little bit, so I'm starting to do a little bit of the curvy action to make it look like he's kind of hanging on. So this time, instead of coming straight down, I kind of wiggled down to the right and then down to the left a little bit. Makes it look like, again, he's kind of hanging on there. He's kind of grasping at the seaweed almost. Yeah, he's grasping at that one. He's like, hello, beep beep. Touch, touch. Okay, I'm gonna do a fourth one. So the fourth one kind of comes down to the left. And once again, I'm gonna curve that a little up. So I'm, again, starting with the tip. Oh, there's a little bit of white on there. Starting with the tip. And I find it helps to point the tip at the literal tip of the starfish. So you can see I'm pointing, maybe this is a better angle. Yeah, pointing my brush down to the left so that I can use the tip at the very end. And then as I brush in, I can use the rest of the bristles as I press down. And it really helps to get a nice smooth, clean look. And then last one is in the bottom right hand corner. Same thing using the tip of the brush. Pressing as I come in. There he is. So once you have your basic shape, you can of course clean it up. What I do to clean it up is just kind of make sure all of my arms or legs of my starfish. Are they all arms? Are they legs? Arm, arm, leg, leg? I don't know. <laughs> uh, anyway, I want to make sure they're all relatively the same length. So for example, I think this guy looks a little short compared to the other, so all you need to do is just extend it a little more. See how it looks? Yeah, that matches a little bit better. I think I also want to widen up the middle a little bit, so I'm just going to go on top of the arms and legs, the limbs <laughs> that I've done, and I'm just kind of widening out as I go in a little bit, so I'm just kind of pressing down a little harder as I get closer to the middle. I think that's looking a little better, it makes them look a little more full. There we go. There, I think he's good actually the way he is, I don't want to play with him too much more. Yeah, I'm gonna keep him like that, I'll give you guys a quick minute or two if you're playing around. Yeah. Hey Pam! Awesome! Clap clap! Can't wait to see. This will be on YouTube by tonight as I've uh, said a few times here. Yeah, I think a lot of people, I appreciate you again coming in to say hi. A lot of people are in the same boat as you. They're going to do this later. So check it out on YouTube later tonight. Whenever my internet decides that it will upload the video. It's not that bad. It takes like two hours, three hours. Okay, so again, my starfish is a nice plain orange right now, but I'll add some little dots on there to give it a little extra detail. Okay, 
Okay, so I'll add that little detail now. It's a nice little simple step of just dotting on some lighter orange. So I'll give you a look here. Again, I could have added lots more detail to this. I was working off of a uh, real photo of a starfish, actually one that my brother took. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of cool detail in there, but I just didn't want to make it too, too complicated. So all I did is I took a super, super light orange. It's kind of dotted around the outsides first. And then I just dotted a little extra in the middle. I kind of brought out some lines of dots coming out to the, again, limbs, legs, arms, I don't know, of the starfish. So it's like a little mini star inside the star. Okay, and I'm definitely using the detail brush for that. These are nice small little dots. All right, so the color I'm using, again, is a very, very light orange. So I'm just going to mix some white, lots of white really, into my existing orange that I was using for my starfish. I might even go to a different area here of my plate. So I get a very pale orange. So here is my original. There's my new one. Very, very pale. Just so it really shows up on top of that existing orange. And once again, I'm just going to use the tip of my brush. And I'm literally just tapping the tip in order to make some little dots around the outside first and then I'll work my way in. So I'll give you a nice close-up here using the tip of my brush, literally tapping with a fresh amount of paint. You can see it just comes off in small little dots. Applying more paint, I find it's good to keep reloading your brush just so you get some clean dots. You're not trying to rub the paint off and kind of causing a mess. Instead, just take your time, grab extra paint with each little row. That way you have lots of paint to tap off as you go. Tap. You can tap or even just like slightly brush your bristles, kind of moving just a little bit. I prefer just to tap. Again, tapping is good when you have lots of paint. Just tap it on. Tap, tap. Oh, that one got a little messy. There we go. And again, I'm just bordering the whole starfish. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap. Tap, tap. That's my last tap, I think. There we go. Just for the border anyway, I still have the inside to do. He's like twinkling. So cute. And then again, I tap some little dots in the middle. So I'm going to start in the very middle, do a little tap. And then what I do is I, I extend maybe a couple into each limb. So I kind of do a couple going up couple going right, down to the right, down to the left, up and to the left. So it's like I'm making a little star. So I'm not filling up the whole space. You can see there's still some orange just on its own, but it gives a little bit of detail in that middle there. Lots of little cute dots. And he pops off a little bit nicer too with all those nice light orange dots. So there you go. There you go. Give you a quick minute if you're still working on those. And I'll go on to the coral. This coral, you guys, caused me a little bit of trouble as I was doing this. I didn't like what I was doing. I had some kind of sprawling out and I covered it up. But I think I figured out more of a simple, yeah, simple clean look here with my pinks. So I'll just bring this forward. You can start to compare what we've got so far. You can see we're almost there. We've got our nice pink corals. Ah, corals. And then I'll layer on some colors for our nice fishies. Get them nice and cleaned up. Pretty similar though, huh? I guess my green over here is a little bit lighter than my seaweed. That's really the only big difference I'm seeing. Oh yeah, I ran out of Okay, so let's talk about the coral a little bit if you're finishing up your starfish just for the next minute or two. So I chose to do lots of pinks for my coral, so I have what I would call more of a medium pink, then a hot pink, and then a super, super light pink. And uh, these kind of look like almost seaweed. They're all just very, you know, localized in their own little bunches. Uh, so I was taking the small detail brush this time, 
and just kind of doing some little wiggles coming down. I was just making sure as I wiggled down, I was coming to the same spot. So it looked more like coral, right? It's kind of like sprawling out here. Yeah. And I guess to make them all a little bit different, I made some a little thinner. So I made lots of little thin short lines for this medium sized coral. For this one, I made thicker ones and even kind of split some of the coral as it came up, kind of like V shape, Y shape. And then for this one, I stuck to thin ones again, just making them a little bit longer, overlapping my hot pink there. Okay, so that's the look that we're going for. Now I'll show you the technique. Hello, Lori. Thanks for popping to say hi. Yes, a lot of people are saying that today. Awesome. I'm glad you made the time to say hey. I really appreciate it. If you want to hang out, you're welcome to. Otherwise, yep, look for this on YouTube. It'll be on by later tonight. Okay, so I'm using that small detail brush, which was just in my mouth there. And I'm going to be mixing together first a nice medium pink. So I'm going to work on the top here, so the furthest back, and then work down to the more foreground elements. So grabbing white, mixing with red, making a nice medium pink. Oh, they're mixed, uh, got some yellow mixed in there, so it turned a little orange. I need to go to a new spot on my plate. That's better. So any medium pink. I wouldn't call this super dark. I wouldn't call it super light, just right in the middle. Awesome, Lori. Okay. Hope you were having a good Sunday. I think a lot of people were maybe busier than they thought today, so a lot of people were like you and they were popping in to say, oh, I'll watch for this on YouTube. It was a beautiful day in KW, so if it was beautiful where you were too, I totally understand. Or maybe just had other things going on. I know we tried a little bit of a different time today. It was 7 p.m., so. Anyway, I've got my detail brush. I've got my medium pink. And I'm just going to do some little squiggles. And they're all going to meet in the same spot. Not the exact same spot, I guess they kind of come across like this, but I'm just adding lots of them. Meeting them all around the same area, I should say. Not the exact same spot, but relatively similar. So I'm really going to add lots of these, just kind of stacking them all next to one another. I don't want to make it too, too cluttered so that I don't see any of the shapes. But again, enough that it looks nice and full. So I find a good way to do that just to make it look like, uh, or I guess to avoid the look of having it kind of blobby. It's just to kind of spread them out a little bit on the tips. It doesn't really matter what's going on at the base. I'm sure they'll all kind of overlap a little bit here and there at the base. But as long as you have some that are a little longer, see a little taller like that, they'll stick out on their own. You can have some really curving out from the side here and then coming in. I might even do a second one doing that again. Yeah, just so it's nice and wiggly in there. I think we'll do another one kind of coming up here. Oops. And maybe one more again. I don't want to clutter it too, too much. So enough that it looks like a nice you know, solid plant. Lots going on there. Not really a plant either. Coral. A little more hard. It's not really as flowy I'm picturing. But yeah, again, you see those ends there all kind of separated and then inside it looks a lot more cluttered and all together like it's a single, single element kind of, you know? And for the bottom, I don't do anything fancy. You can see I just kind of even it out. I'm not doing like a straight across line or anything. Just kind of added a little extra pink down there. It doesn't need to be a solid line all the way across. It just kind of rests on top in my opinion. So that's what I'm doing there. Giving just a quick minute if you want to do that plant there. And going on to the next one. These are all very similar techniques. They're all just kind of using slightly different widths here and there, slightly different colors. So pretty easy just to keep going here. Again, if you need me to slow down, you can definitely say so, but I think we're going at a decent pace here. Oh yeah, it's been an hour and a half. We're good, we're good. Okay, so for my next coral color, I'm using more of a hot pink. 
So I'm just using a nice detail brush here using lots of red and you can mix that either on your existing pink or in a new spot by adding a tiny bit of white but I'm using lots and lots of red and I'm just going to mix it on top of my previous pink. So a nice very very bright hot pink that's what I'm going for. All right, in this next piece of coral, similar technique, a little bit different. We're gonna make some wider lines this time. So I'm gonna make sure I'm pressing down a little harder with my bristles as I come down. And even going back and like widening them out a little bit more with an extra stroke or two. Again, this is just to add a little bit of variety to all of our layers of coral. Got some wide ones, some thin ones. So this one's gonna be nice and wide. And the other difference I made with this one is rather than doing individual, all individual strokes, all individual wiggles, I kind of split some of them in twos and threes. So almost like little trees, you can see like the little branches almost, right? We're splitting the branches apart. I'll do another one kind of coming down here. So that's splitting at the base a little bit more. And again, so I have the same base for this one, but now I'll make a new base and do a few more of those little wiggles kind of splitting off, coming up on top of my previous coral. So you can see already it's looking a little different than the other ones, and that's the goal. We want to get some variety in here. So coming down more to the middle, I'm going to widen that out a little bit as I did before, make it nice and wide at the bottom especially. It still wants to be kind of thin at the top, but doesn't need to be super thin, it can be kind of rounded out. I think I'll split this one in two right here. I think I'll grab another big one coming down and meeting in the middle. So really think of your trees. If you've ever painted trees before, that's kind of what I was thinking of as I was doing these. It's like I'm just making a couple branches on a tree trunk, right? Splitting them all up. Maybe let's split that guy in there. And then, let's see here, I'll do one more just over here, kind of peeking in from the right hand side. And then maybe I'll do a nice tall branch coming over there. One more here. See that? So it's a very similar technique, but just with different placement, different widths, gives it a whole different look. Oh, hey, Alexis. No problem, no problem. Again, a lot of people are popping in to say, hey, so thanks for popping in. This will be on YouTube later. All good. All right, so there's that nice hot pink, just so you can see a nice close up of that. Yeah, thanks for popping in, Alexis. I appreciate it. Hope you had a good Sunday. All right, and then for my last layer of coral, I go back to doing a very, very light pink. So I have my medium pink, my hot pink. Now I'm doing a light pink just to give, once again, a little more variety. So I'm just grabbing lots of white, adding a tiny bit of red, or again, you can use the pile you had of your hot pink, just throw in a bunch of white in there and that'll really lighten it up. I'm doing a very, very pale pink, just so it's very different from my medium pink. And for this one, I kind of combine both techniques together. So this time what I'm doing is I'm doing those kind of individual sections again, uh, but instead of doing the wide the wide corals, I'm doing more of the thin ones. So instead of doing one solid plant, I'm now kind of splitting it up into a couple. So again, very similar technique, just different placement, different color. So going back to the thin wiggles. But this time I'm gonna bring them all very much to the same spot and then do two or three of those same spots, the same bases. And they all don't have to meet right at the bottom. You can make them combine, you know, like halfway up like this, for example. So again, as if you're maybe splitting a few. Oh God, just one more coming out here. So again, the base might be a little bit filled up, but 
really sprawls out on the top there and on the outsides. And I'll do just one more. So I'm going to make this one a little bit wider, a little bit bigger at the base, and really fill up the space with that. Ah, Ashley, yes, I no longer work with them. That's why you can't find me there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't really have a chance to make an announcement or anything. But no, I'm no longer with them. It's only just me. So I'm just doing a second plant right there, second piece of coral. So once again, doing some nice thin ones, they all kind of wiggle down to the same general area. All curling into one another. On a few more, just to make it a little bit bigger. Do like a medium sized one right there. There we go. So that's another one. Yeah, Celine, I'm no longer with them for a couple of weeks now. That's why I've been pretty active on this page. It's been uh, my only thing I've got going, so <laughs> really concentrated on this now. that one there guys I'm just evening out the bottom a bit and there's a nice close-up if you want to see all of those together all the nice layers That's the idea, Ashley. You're very welcome. That's what I want to do too. So I'm, uh, yeah, we're all good here. Okay, I'll leave another quick minute if anyone's still finishing up that coral. And then we've just got our little fishies. We just gotta, yeah, clean up our fish with some nice colors. I keep grabbing my water, it's all gone. Maybe I have some here from earlier today. <laughs> oh, my thumb is completely covered. It's going up. Okay, uh, let's see. So you can get your medium brushes ready if you are ready to go. Get your medium brush ready and whatever color you'll be using. Again, you might not be following with my yellow, so use whatever base color you want if you're doing, again, I expect maybe clownfish. You can do some orange, do some blues whatever, but I'm going to be using my yellow. So I'm just cleaning off my medium sized brush. Okay, so I'm going to start just by doing my base color, which is a nice yellow, but it's not just yellow, it's going to be yellow mixed with a little bit of white. So I'm just going to pour some nice clean yellow on my plate. And then I'm going to mix it with some white. Because I like more of the nice bright kind of buttery yellow and I do find that it kind of sticks a little bit better on top as well. Oh Trudy! 
Awesome. Yes, this will be up later tonight. You can have a look on YouTube. You just finished Rainbow Falls. Ooh, did you post it on the page? On the event page? So all those past event pages are still up on Facebook and they will be indefinitely. You can always go back to the event page to post if you want to post with all the other photos. Feel free just to share what you did. It's fun to see what everybody made. But I'm glad you enjoyed it. I think a lot of people really liked that Rainbow Falls one. I think that was the first one I did that everyone was kind of going like, ooh, wow, which was really exciting. It's been hard for me to come up with designs, but it's been a lot of fun, honestly. It's, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to create some unique designs, but it's been good for me. All right, so again, I've prepped my brush with my nice light yellow, so it's yellow with white, medium-sized brush, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna overlap my white. So you can see, because we did the white base layer, how clean that light yellow is coming off. There's no more streaks coming through. There's no more blue there. I can just now confidently go over top of our base layer and get a nice clean yellow base. Awesome, Trudy. I'll go look a little later or maybe tomorrow morning. Usually that's what I do in the mornings. I like just uh, <laughs> honestly kind of relaxing outside and uh, looking through all the nice little photos. I look at all of them. I know I don't comment on all of them because there's so many. But I started commenting on some that I saw just to just to throw out some compliments because I was saying earlier how great all those little groups have been, everyone's been so positive to each other and like complimenting to each and every painting. I just love the little community we've made. It's been so great. No negative. I don't think I've seen one like negative or upset, angry post for the last month. That's been so nice. <laughs> so nice. Everyone's just all very happy, understanding. Again, encouraging to one another. It's been so beautiful to see, especially in today's world. Honestly, we have a lot going on, so it's been a really nice little happy place we've had and continue to have. And that's why I always really encourage everybody to post their photos, because I think it it encourages everybody to keep painting more when they get a few more honest compliments or honest opinions on their paintings too. It makes everyone feel a little extra special, you know? Like it's cool enough that you're creating your own painting, but it's extra cool when someone's like, dang, that one's real nice. I love it. Like, wow, really? So yeah, I know sometimes people are a little scared to post their finished works or like, and it's okay too, if you want to keep it to yourself, maybe you want to just keep your it to yourself, totally fine, you don't have to share it. But it is really fun to see everybody's thoughts and opinions when they post them up. And you get to see all the good variety too, I think some people get a little worried about creating the exact same thing I am, or like, oh it doesn't look like yours, but you really start to see when you look through all the photos how none of them really look like mine. They all look similar, but none of them are exact, but they all look really cool in their own way. So I'll keep saying it. That's a really cool part about this whole thing. And that's why I keep encouraging all that creativity because it's really cool to see everyone getting a little more comfortable and painting their own stuff. So there you go. That's my spiel. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I've got my yellow base. Uh, if you're finishing off with uh, the design I've made with the fishies here, I'm now mixing together a nice bright orange, because the bright orange is what I use kind of just for the little tropical fish markings. What was this? A butterfly fish? I think, yeah. Oh, butterfly fish markings. I had some orange little wiggles in the middle. I used orange kind of on the end of the tail, on the end of the little fins, and then also at the little mouth and nose area as well. So if you're mixing an orange with me, that'll be red and yellow mixed together. I try and keep it nice and bright, so no need to add any white this time. It's just going to be a nice bright orange. And of course I'm using the detail brush. 
And these little little wiggles were kind of funny. They uh, what they did is they kind of came straight down a little bit, then they wiggled over to the right, down, over to the left, down. Kind of a weird little little wiggly shape. Uh, and I'm gonna leave space here because I want to leave space for the eye. Uh, you can kind of overlap it, but I tried my best to keep the markings just a little bit on their own versus the little eye marking right there on its own near the right. So I'm leaving a little bit of space here using the tip of my brush coming down. And then I wiggle a little right, come down. So a nice kind of large, like center of the wiggle, you could say, come down a lot, a lot, a lot. And then just before the bottom, I wiggle back left and down. So see that shape? That's kind of the shape I'm going for, how it comes straight a little bit, wiggles to the right, down, left, down. And that's a pretty thick line. I'm going to try and make this next one a little thinner as I go. But all you do is you stack a bunch of these all next to one another, kind of coming down to the left-hand side of the fish. And I would say I try and make them, yeah, thinner as I go, maybe a little light-handed, so just using a little less pressure. And if the yellow kind of mixes in as you go, that's okay too. It'll kind of make it look a little more delicate as it moves along to the left. I'm trying to use, again, a little less paint, a little less pressure. They don't need to be perfectly clean lines either. And they just kind of almost fade away because they're getting thinner and thinner. So I'm trying to use a very light line, light pressure, I mean. See how that one kind of kind of came off a little more split, a little faded at the end. That's exactly what I want. I just want it to kind of fade away as it gets further over. And then I'm just adding a little bit more orange at the base of the tail. I saw a little orange marking when I was looking online right there. And two little orange curves just on the curves of the fins there. So on the bottom and on the top. There he is. And then just with the orange again, the last little details, I just add a small little horizontal line. I just wanted to do that for the mouth or nose area. I think it's the little mouth. It goes, oh no. I didn't really see that in the reference, but I thought that was cute. Just to kind of split it a little bit, give it a little bit of a mouth. So just because I continue to have the orange on my brush, I'm just going to do the same thing on my little smaller fish here. So these uh, little waves or little curves will go the opposite way this time. So this time what you're doing is you're going down a little bit, shifting left, down, 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 and then shifting right, down. Right, so it's opposite of what you were doing before because this fish is looking the other way. Down, left, down, right, down. Down, left, down, right, down. And I'm just going to try and use a little less paint, a little less pressure to make it thinner and thinner as I go. Down, left, down, oops, right, down. Oh, that guy got a little messy. And if you ever do a line that you don't like, you can always just, like you saw me do, kind of wipe it away a little bit. You can use a little more yellow to cover up anything you don't like and just try again, either after the yellow's dry or just immediately. I'm sure you can try it immediately, probably. Okay. Got my orange tail. Two little orange curves. Right there and there. And then a tiny little horizontal line at the mouth. There they are. Nice little tropical fishies, butterfly fish. We learned that. <laughs> Did I use black? Huh. I thought it was a blue. I'm just looking at the eye color. Not when I looked up the butterfly fish, it was a dark blue. It looks a little black here though. Maybe it mixed with the yellow. I'm gonna call this a dark blue. Okay, I'm just giving everyone a minute or two to finish up the orange in their fish. 
And the last step is going to be adding a nice dark blue eye shape. So we don't really do an actual eye, it's just kind of the eye marking. It's kind of like the cardinals that we did. Oh, Lori, no worries. Nice to see you. Thanks for popping in. Yes, there will be a replay as usual. All of these, all of these always go on YouTube. So you can uh, look at my YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe to it. A lot of people do that just so they're notified when the video is posted. Uh, but that'll be posted later tonight, as soon as my internet decides to upload it. So if you're looking to paint tomorrow or later, you should be good to go. All good, Lori. No worries. I think Sunday escaped most people. There's been a lot of people who have popped in to say that too. So you're good, you're good. Okay guys, let's go on to that last little step. So the last step is just adding those little eye markings. I would describe these kind of as, they look almost like commas, very thick commas or like teardrop shapes that are kind of curved. And again, they just kind of mark where the eye is. I would expect the eye is just somewhere kind of hidden in here, but we just do the marking, and then that way it makes it look like that's where the eye is. Kind of like the cardinals. Again, we did cardinals a couple days ago, and that's what we did too. We did the black markings where the eyes are, but we didn't quite literally dot them in, although I saw some do it, which was cool. Um, but yeah, you can just do little markings there, and that way you can see where the eye would be. You don't need to literally do an eyeball, though. So I'm going to keep using my detail brush. I was just kind of talking to myself there. This looks black, but I was, I'm 99% sure I used a dark blue here. And I even looked up the photo again online that I was referencing, and it did look dark blue, so I don't know if it just maybe mixed with the yellow or just dried a little darker, but anyway, I'm going to use a nice dark blue, personally. So I'm trying to grab some straight blue paint from my plate here, any that I can find on my little detail brush. And I describe these as kind of comma shapes, or kind of like curved teardrops almost. So what they do is they start with a nice curve on the top. Oh, that is a door. I would just want to lean like that, like it's going hee hee, a little squint. But now we're going to bring it down to the shape. So this shape that kind of curves over to the left, comes down to a point. It will be a point in a second. And you're just kind of curving the other side the same way. So you're curving down kind of to the left then meeting up at the point there you can fill that in see how it's looking and then kind of adjust as you need I know I'm gonna round out my top a little bit more maybe bring the point down a little bit more so I'm just gonna extend the point down a little bit just to fill up that space a little more and go round out this left hand side a bit There we go. That's a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And it's the same for this little guy, just flipped the other way. So I'll do that again. Starting with my little curve up top again. That is just, I just kind of want to make him look like he's kind of squinting and laughing. I think it's so cute. <laughs> Gives him a little more personality. All right, so from that curve, what I'm doing this time, I'm curving the opposite way. So I'm gonna curve kind of to the right and then down to a point. And then again, curving to the right, down to a point. So this one's of course gonna be a little bit smaller shape size wise for the smaller fish. I'm just kind of cleaning up that curve there. There he is there. There it is all pulled back. There we go. Thanks, mocap. I'm glad you like it. I just finished. You can see it now matches my background there. <laughs> They're the same. All right. So whenever you're done, you guys, as usual, you can sign your painting. I always recommend that. I'll do my little signature in the bottom corner here, maybe on my rock. Cool. And that really finishes it off. So again, sign your paintings whenever you're done. No rush. If you're still working on it, you can now work on it as long as you want, obviously, now that you have all the steps. So I said it a million times already, but if you missed anything, you want to review anything, this will be on YouTube by a little later tonight. It will be on Facebook before then as well. It kind of lives on Facebook for a few hours once I 
um, as I'm downloading and then uploading to YouTube. So <clears throat> you can always rewatch it right now if you need to. <clears throat> need that water. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it is there if you need it. Otherwise, uh, just as usual, thanks so much for coming, you guys. Uh, if you're interested in more tutorials, those will be posted within the next day or two. I'm going to be doing Niagara Falls on Friday at 8 p.m. And then I'll be doing a Father's Day painting on Sunday, the nice kind of fishing uh, dock painting. I'm excited for that one, too. Uh, so you can just keep watching the Facebook page. I'll be sure to let you know by posting those usual event pages, which you can RSVP to so that you're notified when I go live so that nothing is missed. That's always helpful. Uh, as usual, this uh, event was completely free today. There are tip links in the description if you'd like to support me. Thank you so much for those thinking to do that. Otherwise, again, the tips are never expected. They're just always appreciated. So uh, thanks again just uh, really for showing up and for uh, brightening my day a bit. I was talking, I was getting a little sentimental earlier in terms of all the photos being posted and all the positivity. So this is that's really why I do it. So uh, that's really the main point here. Uh, so yeah, thanks for just continuing to be kind and nice and uh, yeah, supportive in any way you can. Uh, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed. If anyone is all done or wants to ask any last minute questions, I'll stick around for another minute or two and then I will uh, sign off and then you can watch this video over again if you need to. <laughs> yeah, Celine. I'm doing this. That's this is what I'm doing. This is what I do. This is what I wanted to do, and this is what I'm doing. Free events, baby. Uh, I'm doing uh, these tutorials more specifically. I'll get more specific. I'm doing tutorials uh, a couple times a week on this page, as you've seen, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying out different avenues. That's why I'm posting to YouTube, going on Twitch. I'm seeing if there's any opportunity for me to be supported in any other ways there as well honestly. Um, there's lots of different ways to be supported on all of those platforms. Financially, I'm talking about, obviously, because I'm jobless. Um, so yeah, that's why I've been working hard and experimenting on all these different spots. So uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Just, just literally painting all the time in different areas on YouTube, on Twitch, on Facebook. And that's why I'm uh, trying different things other than tutorials, too. I'm just seeing uh, what people are looking for. So that's why I keep ask, asking for so much feedback, so many suggestions, because I really do want to hear what all of you want to see uh, from me so that I can uh, continue to provide that way while I'm, uh, yeah, this is, this is my next thing for sure. I'm, that's what I'm working on right now, just this. I can fully concentrate on it, yeah. You're welcome, Kim. And Carol, you're welcome. You're awesome. Thank you for <laughs> throwing that out there. Again, I'll wait another minute or two just to make sure we're all taken care of. You're welcome, Jean. It's all good, Celine. Yeah, it was time. But yeah, point is I'm still painting and that's what I love doing. So that's all I can do for now. Yep. Uh, Deb, I was, uh, I only use acrylics for now, but I was kind of thinking and talking to myself, honestly. <laughs> Uh, today on Twitch and talking with others about the idea of maybe trying out some oils. Um, I tried them out years ago and just got so frustrated with them because of the whole drying time situation. Uh, I really like acrylics because they dry very fast so if I make you know a mistake or I want to throw something else on top I can do that very quickly and easily. But I was playing with my clouds earlier. I was showing off my little cloud paintings. And I was wondering if maybe oils would be better for that just because they stay a lot more, yeah, they stay wet for a longer period of time. It allows you to kind of play with them a little more without racing against time to blend. So who knows? I might try with oils a little bit. I don't feel comfortable teaching with oils. I, I really, my comfort level is with acrylics, clearly. 
But once again, that's why I'm on these different platforms. Maybe uh, I'll just have a few hours of experimenting with oils. You can watch me play around if you want, or <laughs> or I'll tell you how it goes when I do it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I would say watercolors are like my second second medium of choice. I do acrylics, watercolors, oils are dead last right now. <laughs> uh, my granny does oils, so she paints with oils used to and uh, amazing she does amazing stuff so I'm hoping maybe there's a piece of her in me that maybe will pull through if I continue to play around with oils but thus far it hasn't been great <laughs> but yeah yes Masuma yes I was just saying to everybody I think Friday will be the day for that one I will for sure post a Facebook event and uh, You'll be able to see the Facebook event when I'm painting it, of course, and you can RSVP so that you're notified, but I think it'll be this Friday at 8 p.m. I would expect to see that up on the Facebook page very, very soon. Yeah, exactly, Deb. It's so different, and especially because I've now been painting with acrylics for like, you know, 8 to 10 years straight. I don't think I've picked up oils for probably 10 years. I think it was in a high school class, and I was like, ugh, I hate it. <laughs> so I never picked them up again. I think I even have an oil paint set in my closet and I just haven't really picked it up. Um, so maybe one time I'll throw those out and see what happens. Throw them, not throw them out in the trash, throw them out on my art station and uh, see what happens. But yeah, very different. I just, but I love the looks of oils and Bob paint with, paints with oils too. So I think it would be cool if maybe I followed along with a Bob Ross, either with acrylics and then maybe upgrading to oils. I think that would be cool. See, this is what I mean. I can do different things like that if that would be an enjoyable thing to watch me kind of going around with Bob's uh, Bob's tutorial and trying to replicate what he does because I've never done that before I've always watched Bob but never actually followed along with him so there you go I could do that very soon cool okay Deb you can watch for that yeah I might Anna like I've done some uh, recently just in a little bullet journal that I have a little notebook essentially and I really did enjoy it. I, li I loved um, just kind of splotching on colors. I was doing it with flowers. I did a, a bee. It was so cute. Honestly, I was really proud of what I did. <laughs> I just kind of splotched on color. And then I used a uh, Micron like black pen, essentially, and uh, really outlined. And it really cleaned it all up. It looked real good. It's a lot simpler than a lot of people think, too. I feel like obviously you can get a lot more complicated with watercolors. But what I was doing was very, very straightforward. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. With Sharpies, I was using little uh, Pigma Micron pens. I'm big into bullet journaling, so if you're big into bullet journaling, you know what the Pig <laughs> Pigma Microns are. They're just really thin, essentially thin black uh, markers and pens. And uh, that's essentially what I was doing, just doing lots of watercolor, then using the black to kind of outline or add details, kind of like brushing on top. And uh, yeah, it, it really cleans it all up. It makes it look a lot more, you know, more difficult and professional than it really is. So maybe I'll do that soon. I would need to play around with my camera setup. I'd want to do maybe a camera facing down so you can really see what I'm doing. But again, these are all things I can experiment with. So yeah, good idea. I'll think about it more. I'll think of maybe some specific, specific designs. Again, I wouldn't feel comfortable quite teaching them, I think, but no problem with, uh, you know, watch me mess around and try and replicate, you know? I wouldn't want to do a step-by-step -step thing quite yet, but if you're down to watch me experiment and you can experiment with me, that's kind of uh, what I'm thinking with that, both that and the oil paint. So there you go. Okay. All right. I think it's getting pretty quiet. I've enjoyed chatting with you guys. Thanks for hanging out, especially at the end there. That was a fun little chat. Um, but yeah, like I keep saying, watch that Facebook page. I'll uh, get more events up very, very soon in the next day or two. Watch that YouTube page. I'll have this up on YouTube and any others that I do. And uh, otherwise, thanks for, again, hanging out. I'll see you at the next one. I'll say bye to Facebook first and then to Twitch. So bye, Facebook. See you later. Bye with my painty hands. Boop.